Hello, 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 and welcome to Your Beauty. -O. Not one for the purists this week. We are going back to basics. I am going to go through how to play Sabuti O, the rules of Sabuti O, and how it's played. Why? Because at the moment it's Christmas time. You might have received Sabuti O for Christmas. You might have received it as a present any other time of the year, and you're looking for a quick fire guide on how to play it. Well, this is your place. I'm going to show you how Sabuti O works. A quick disclaimer first this is not official rules. These are not professional fist stiff rules. These are my rules that I play, which are easy to pick up for any player, easy to understand, easy to play, and they represent real football. And as we know, in real football, there is no rules, there is laws. So we will talk about them as laws of the game. We'll talk about them, the laws of Sabutio. These are all written on my website as well, so you can head over there, sabutiocollector.com, hit rules, and then they're all written on there for you as well. If it's your first time heading over to the channel and you find these rules useful, let me know down in the comments, let me know the rules you play. I'm pretty sure down in the comments I'm gonna get absolutely slated because these aren't the proper rules. People will be like, oh, you should have done this. Don't worry about it, you play your way. And if you really do enjoy the video as well and you do enjoy the rules, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you get more regular Sputo content. So let's jump straight down to the table and let's start talking about these laws now we play this game. All right, so let's talk about what you need to play this game. And first off, you'll need a pitch, doesn't matter what size, any table football pitch will do, as long as it's got a shooting line going across it here. As you can see, there's another one at each end, so it's sectioned in. This is basically, you can only shoot from within these areas, but we'll come to that a little bit later. You obviously need two teams, so we've got two goalkeepers, 11 outfield players, and then, of course, you need a ball and a goal placed at each end. If you want, you can go one step further and you can have any accessories around the pitch. You can have corner flags, you can have anything. You can use a fence to stop the ball going out of play. But all you really need is the pitch, the ball, the players and the goals and then you are good to go. There are other things you can use as well. You can use corner takers and kicking takers, which you'll see come up later more on them as we get through it. All right, so before we go any further with the laws, we need to talk about how we actually play this game. It's quite simple. The players are flicked to kick. It's as simple as that. You flick the player and they go onto the ball. When you're kicking, you may need to make sure you use your nail. You don't use your thumb as a spring so you're not propelling like that. It's very simple, either index finger or middle finger, and you are literally holding there, pushing down onto the ground a little bit, and then flicking forward. Players will fall over from time to time. But no matter how you're moving your player around the pitch, it's a simple flick. He's gone over again there. Look, this is why I'm saying my own rules. Because as you can see, I'm actually not very good. I know how to play this game, but I'm not great at it. So that is that. That is just how simple it is to flick and kick the ball. But if I'm all honest, the big disclaimer with this, this is your game. You play it how you want. Don't feel pressured to play in a certain way. If you find it easier to just shove a player like that, then do it. As long as the other player's not moaning at you or not got the ump, do it. If you're playing with little kids and they can't flick, as you can see, probably I should shuffle. If you're playing with kids and they can't flick properly, then let them shove it. It's up to you. It's your game. Like I said, this isn't a video for the purists. All right, so before you go any further, you need to decide how long you're going to play this game for. A lot of people do 15 minutes per half, but it's entirely up to you. You might want to do five minutes and a half, 10 minutes and a half. However, of course you need to decide who kicks off. I would suggest flicking a coin as always. Whoever wins the toss can choose if they kick off or they can choose what end they want. And whoever loses does vice versa option. Very similar to typical Sunday league football. And then once you've done that, you decide what end you've got, you then need to set your teams up. Set them up however you want. No formations wrong. I would suggest even 442, 433, I find their best. They replicate football. So let's get these two teams set up. Here you go. We'll have it at the south end of kicking off. You'll notice I've not put the goalkeepers in yet. That's because the goalkeepers kind of need to go in a little bit of a specific way. So I'm going to move the goal off the goal line just to show you how they go in, and then we can put them back that way as well. Let's get him in down that end of the goal. So, goalkeepers need to go in. Put the goalkeeper on the back of the net. Some some pitches and posts were bars. The goalkeeper goes like that. His handle must be sticking out the back, ready for control. It's a quick change around because it'd be easier for me to flick that way as the camera's in the way. So just like normal football, very easy to kick off. You flick your player towards the ball and kick the ball forward. It's as simple as that. All right, so very quickly, when you've kicked off, the player that kicks off can't touch the ball again, but now I'm gonna talk about possession. So the team that's in possession is the team that's allowed to touch the ball. So if you kicked off, you're in possession. Normal Sabutio rules go into apply. We have an attacking team, currently the yellows, a defending team, which is the blues. The attacking team move forward by flicking the ball. Simple. The same figure can only kick the ball three times in a row before another player has to touch it again. So, one, two, three. He can no longer touch that ball again. Another player on his team must touch the ball. So now before he can touch it, he needs to touch it. 
awful flick, but he touched it. Now, this player, if he wanted, could touch it again. Obviously, I'd need to spin that round, but I'm not going to even attempt to do that because I'm rubber at flicking. So the same player can only touch the ball three times in succession before another player touches it. That does mean if they want, they can go like that, like that, stand him up, like that, and we can carry on going as many times as they want. However, the defending team doesn't just stand there and wait. For every attacking flick, the defending team is allowed a defensive flick. Now, when the defending team is making this defensive flick, it cannot touch the ball, it cannot touch the man. If it touches the man, it'd be a foul. If it touches the ball, then we move the player back. So he could defend that by maybe getting in the way. He missed it, so we go on charge. What you'll see has happened there is the ball has hit the blue player. So that means now possession changes hands. So it's now in blue's possession. So the blue team have now got possession. The yellow team become defending. So we'll flick. He has his flick. I can now defend. He flicks. Blue team can now carry on going. They're allowed to hit the ball. He's fallen over, but he still hit the ball. The yellow team still defending, not allowed to hit the ball, but they can try and block. It's a good block. Blue team still in possession, they can touch the ball. The other team can try and defend. Blue team are gonna to wanna to work their way out. And just like normal football, you will work your way up and down the pitch until play gets further. I'm flicking really badly here because I'm the wrong way around. Defending flick, attacking flick. Attacking team can touch the ball. Non-attacking team, the defending team, cannot touch the ball. Make sense? I think it does. Then we come to shooting. So. This, as I said, is a shooting line. This is a shooting area. You cannot shoot until the entire ball is in the shooting area. Although, if you want, if it makes it easier for you, you can scrap that rule. It's entirely up to you. But traditional studio states, you can only shoot when you are in that area. So, all these players are lined up. When the ball's here, the yellow team are marching on forward. At the moment, he can't shoot. But as soon as the ball goes in there, he can shoot from wherever he likes. The only other condition on shooting is, yes, the ball must be in here, but the, the attacking player who's gonna do the flicking shot needs to be in this half of the pitch. If he's over here in this half of the pitch, too far away. It's a bit unrealistic, and it? It's not like normal football. So when you're shooting, obviously you're aiming at goal. You do not have to tell the goalkeeper to be ready. The opponent should naturally be ready standing there with his keeper. The keeper must stay on his line. He cannot be waved around in the air or anything like this when you're holding it, so nothing like this. He needs to stay on his line. Obviously you can move him to where you want him, but he needs to stay on the pitch. So let's have a shot, see if I can actually score for a change. Goal, here you go, quite simple, one nil, that's a goal. If that was to go out wide, obviously that would be a goal kick. If the keeper was to save it and it was to go wide, it would be a corner, and so on. All right, let's go into the, world, the weird, wacky world of goalkeepers. Obviously the whole part of the goalkeeper, the whole rod, the handle, all forms the same part of the keeper. It makes the keeper one. The goalkeeper can't really be fouled. If you flick and hit the keeper, then it's not really a foul. We'll talk about fouls a bit later on anyway. When the goalkeeper touches the ball, so if we're shooting against his keeper, he parries it. His team is now in possession. The team that had the shot now become the defending team, right? But there is something else you can do with your goalkeeper as well. You can use something called a flicking goalkeeper. These are additional accessories. You don't need to use them. A flicking goalkeeper can be used for two things. It can be used for a goal kick. So say you've got a goal kick, leave your keeper on the line. He can then, because you don't want to be kicking off of him, and you don't want to make it like under 11s where you have to pull your centre back in to take a kick, right? You just want to flick him, done. Goal kick, taken. He then gets back off the pitch. Bob's your uncle. But he can also be used to play the ball from anywhere on the pitch, providing his team is in possession. So let's say his team is in possession and you want to use your goalkeeper. You can pull him, put that keeper in the back. From anywhere along your six-yard line, he can now play the ball. So you play it. His team now in possession. So he, he's now played the ball. He can go back over there and he can go out. If he misses the ball, so bang, he's missed the ball completely. The attacking team are allowed three flicks at the ball before he goes back into goal. So they could do a flick, a flick, a flick, then he goes back. So, and you put your keeper out. So there, you do run the risk of if you use a flicking keeper during open play, you do run the risk, miss it. Uh-oh, keeper's out of the goal. Luckily, I'm rubbish. Anyone else would have scored a goal right there. You do run that risk. All right, with all this mad flicking going on, there is obviously a case that players are going to get flicked off the pitch. You can see just how bad my flicking is. This is why I'm a collector, but I do know the rules, but this is why I'm a collector more than a player, because as you can see, I am bloody rubbish at this game. But let's say all this mad flicking's going on. 
players are naturally going to end up off the pitch. If a player ends up off the pitch, he is moved to the touchline where he went off and he can then be flicked towards the ball or the fending flick from within, from within that position. If a player goes off the back, exactly the same, you bring him up to there. If a player ends up in the goal, where he, they go on the six yard line where they went in, all right? Some rules say that you should put them in the goal line, but I think that encroaches the keeper too much. That's my way of doing it. <laughs> then you've got good old offside. Offside works just like normal traditional football, but with Sabutio. So on this little example I've got set up at the moment, this player is in an offside position. This player is not in the offside position. Should this player feed the ball through, like so, if this player then flicks and touches the ball, it's offside, indirect free kick. However, this player over here can play the ball, even though with my bad skills, he can't. What a bad teacher, right? They say if you can't teach, don't they? So offside, he's in an offside position, he's not. Flick the ball through. If he touches it now, it's offside. If he flicks and touches it, it's not offside. However, there is a way to get your players back on side. So, for example, we've come into this situation here. Before I make this player do the through ball, the attacking team is allowed an onside flick. Now, if you've got two players in an offside position, you're allowed two onside flicks. If you've got three players in an offside position, you can only make a maximum of two onside flicks, okay? So, we've got this player here who's in an offside position. I want to put this ball through. I'll call first onside flick. I will then flick him onside. He falls over. Now he's onside. But because the attacking team's had an onside flick, the defending team also gets a flick. Now the defending team can't play the ball. They can't put a poor path minimum on the pitch. The player they flick must be dedicated to marking this player. So if I wanted to move someone over, I'd move either him or him. Bang, he's marking him. So now I've brought him onside. It's very simple. This player can now play the ball as he were. He's give away possession there. But he can then play the ball once he's been played onside. So you can do that onside flick and then play the ball. That doesn't make sense, head over to the rules on the website, it'll explain it a little bit more on there. Alright, so this is a replication of football. We're going to get fouls, right? So Sabutio has foul too. So foul play, there's, there's multiple different ways you can have a foul with Sabutio. So I'm going to go through as many as sort of come out and I can give you the sort of the outcome that goes along with them as well. So, number one, it is a foul if the defending team hits the attacking team during the defending flicks. So obviously this team are going along, moseying along, blah, 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 blah. They're hitting the ball. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the defending team goes for a block and he takes out the player. That is a foul. It is a free kick. However, you can, if you want, you can play an advantage. If the attacking team's happy, he can carry on playing. He can say, no, I keep playing on. You can also request that the players be moved back as well. It's entirely up to him. Depends on what situation. Just like in real football, if there's an advantage, there's an advantage. So that's how the defending team commits a foul. The attacking team can commit a foul as well. So let's say, for example, this is the attack. Yellows are the attacking team. Blues aren't. They're working their way along the pitch, up the field. He slides down. Blue player makes a blocking flick. So he's now trying to block the path of the ball. And before he hit, before the attacking player hits the ball, he hits the defending player. That's a free kick. He can, he can hit the defending player after he's played the ball. That is not a foul, that is not a free kick. But if he hits the player before he plays the ball, you've earned yourself a free kick. Possession changes to the other side, and they get a free kick as well. We also have handball as well. So if a player falls over like that, oh, if a player falls over like that, because it does happen, you've seen what my flick is like. They fall over all the time. Look, I put him at one, look. See, players fall over all the time. If a player does fall over, there's nothing wrong. You can stand it back up, just roll him back on his base. But if you have a player like that, whose head got his head down or he's fallen over or whatever, and the ball heads towards him, attacking or defending team. If the ball hits him and it hits his body, it's a ball. It's a ball. It's a free kick. Possession changes hands if it needs to. It's a free kick. So if your player does fall over, make sure just roll him back up on his base. It is also a free kick to the opposing side. If the player goes down and his hand touches the ball. There should be absolutely no reason for him to touch the ball. If the player's hand touches the ball or an opposition team, Free kick, possession changes, it's a free kick. It is also a free kick if the same figure touches the ball four times in a row, albeit it will give an indirect free kick. So, one, two, three, four. That's a free kick, but it's an indirect free kick. It's an indirect free kick, because a player can only touch the ball three times, remember? So if he touches the ball three times, one, two, Free. another player from that team must touch the ball. It is also an indirect free kick 
Should a player take it a corner, a goal kick, throw in, touch the ball twice. So, give you an example. This player here, move that out of the way. So, this player is taking a throw. He takes his throw. And then, before another player touches the ball, he gets involved and he, he touches it again. Indirect free kick. Same, let's move that back up for you. Same as we've still got a free kick here, for example. He takes his free kick. Bang, he's taking his free kick. He can't touch the ball again until another player touches it. There you go. He's just earned an indirect free kick against his team. So as I said, there's two types of free kicks in Tabutio. There is an indirect free kick and a direct free kick. Any free kick outside of a shooting zone is going to be an indirect free kick. Why? Because, well, you can't shoot from outside of the shooting area, can you? So any free kick out here is going to be indirect. However, free kicks for touching the ball, touching a player, and a player touching the ball twice after a corner, throwing, goal kick, or corner kick, indirect free kicks inside the box. So there are instances you'll get a free kick in the shooting area and you won't be able to shoot. Obviously, if you have an indirect free kick, it needs to touch another player first. But if you have a free kick anywhere on the pitch, what you do, you select the player you want to take it. He can come from anywhere on the pitch. So if I wanted, I could bring him over all the way over. You then get two positional flicks. So I'm allowed to flick two attacking players to put him into a better position. So I might move him forward there. And I might move him forward just there. The defending team, once them teams have made, also are then allowed two defending flicks. So I might move him there. And I might maybe bring back another defender. Awful. Shocking. When taking a free kick, the defensive team needs to be 90 millimetres away from the ball. So if you need to move him away, just slightly, say he was there where the free kick was, we might just move him back to there so it's fair. So two positional flicks from both teams, attack inside first before the free kick is taken, and then the chosen man can take the free kick. Quite simple. If you earn a free kick within the shooting area, you can choose your player to take it as per. So we're going to have him to take it. It's outside the box. The attacking team can make his two positional flicks as per one, two. The defending team can make two positional flicks. But the defending team can also create a wall of up to four players. So pick up your players you want for the wall. Remember, 90 millimeters away. I think that's set up rather nicely. He's got a free kick, he's got a wall. Should we have a go, see if I can dink this in? The wall's done its job. It also goes without saying that any foul play that would result in a direct free kick anywhere on the pitch, it happens inside the penalty box. You know what it is, don't you? It's of course a penalty. No players can go in the penalty box. They can be repositioned anywhere you want, all over the table. Position them where you want. So you might choose your offence up here. You might have some defenders lagging around. But they cannot go in the penalty area. Penalty. Yeah. Alright, so if the ball goes out of play and it's a throw in, you choose your player from anywhere on the pitch that you want to take it. And you are allowed one positional flick. So first the attacking team might make their positional flick. I'll move him over there. And then the defending team is allowed to make their defensive flick after that as well to defend. The guy taking the throw in cannot come onto the pitch. Obviously, when you take a throw in, you don't come onto the pitch. So it's almost a cut. Bang, he's taken his free kick. He's not come on the pitch. If he was to come onto the pitch, like so, he's come on the pitch, foul throw, the other team gets the throw. You can also use the throwing figures if needs be, if you want to get involved that way. All right, so let's talk about corners. You have a shot, it cannons off one of the defending players or the keeper parries it round the side. A corner is awarded to the attacking side. With a corner, you are allowed three positional flicks. So the attacking team, first they make their positional flicks. One, two, and three. Then the defending team can make theirs as well. So one, two, three. He's made them. After that, it's then up to you to take the corner any way you see fit. Oh, possession's changed over. If only it had knocked him, he could have then slotted that right in. You can, if you wish, use the corner taker figures. If the ball's to go out instead of a corner, both teams can rearrange their figures all over the pitch as much as they want. So we've got a goal kick here. We'll push this forward line here. And remember, if you want, you've got your flicking goalkeeper who can take the goal kick for you. As I've said many a time during this video, this is not proper official rules. You wouldn't use these for a tournament or anything like that. You will get other instances of rise during the game of Sputio. Everything can't have a rule written for it, but just relate the most football answer you can to it. If it would happen in football, 
it would happen in spirits. If you don't know, something happens and you think, oh, I don't know what to do. What would happen in real football? As you can see by me playing, I'm not the best player, but I am a collector of Sabutio, so I do know the rules. All the rules are published on my website, so you can go over, download these as much as you can. These are casual rules made for casual gameplay, so you can just pick it up, play the game, and get on with it, and be able to understand what's going on. If you want further rules, you can go online, search Fist if you've got really professional stuff. You can search Beauty of Advanced Rules. There's a whole world out there. I just thought I'd put these together for you. I really appreciate you coming over to the channel and letting me show you how to play Sabutio. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's always loads of Sabutio content on there. I'm all over social media, so you can come and join me on that as well. I'm going to end this video. I always sign off if I keep on flicking to camera. I'm going to try and get around this horrible, horrible angle of the table. And I'm going to try and flick this player and we'll uh, see if we can score a very long range goal. So as I always say, as always, keep on... Shocking. Absolutely shocking.